What is up everyone? Welcome back to another FPL video and today we're having a look ahead to game week six. Again, midweek deadline for game week five means we've only got a few days to finalize our teams for the upcoming game week. What is up everyone, FPL Harry here and welcome back to another video. Today it is my game week six transfer plans. We are having a look at the upcoming game week deadline on Saturday morning. So only a few days to finalize what we're gonna do with our teams going into this week. Again, I'm recording before any of the matches on Wednesday night. I know the lineups, unfortunately Halland is starting. I've seen that much. The games have not kicked off. I don't actually know if Salah, who's my captain is gonna start. I'm very, very worried about what Halland is gonna do, but today we're having a look to next week. We're not worrying about too much what happened in game week five. However, one of the big talking points and the player that I've got in my team, yellow flag at the moment, is Rodrigo, one of the most highly owned and most highly transferred in players so far this season has picked up a yellow flag. He dislocated his shoulder in the first half of the match against Everton and obviously we'll have to be doing something with him because it doesn't look like he's going to be back for the weekend and game week seven as well does seem unlikely. In terms of how I'm lining up, up at the moment my team is as it is on screen we've got Sanchez in goal again happy enough with him the game week five result was fine Fulham are a very good side going forward and I did expect them to score so hopefully Sanchez can get back to his clean sheet ways in game week six as well in defense the big guns do start we have Trent and Cancelo in there again hoping for starts with them although with the Champions League starting there is a little bit of concern of rotation for some of these players going into these fixtures next to Cancelo I have Kieran Trippier Crystal Palace at home Good fixture for him, happy with that. Again, he did pick up a slight knock, but he has been cleared to play, I think, for the Liverpool game tonight and then should be fine for that fixture at the weekend as well. I have brought in Saliba for Reese James going into game week five, which is my first big mistake of the season. I sold Reese James thinking he wouldn't be available for game week six, but he's already back in training. And I brought in Saliba, who now has a difficult fixture against Manchester United. Now, this would be fine if Rodrigo hadn't gone and got injured. Now, I am in the position where in my midfield, I am either having to start Andreas Pereira away at Tottenham, which is not what I want to do, or have to start Saliba away at Manchester United again, which is not what I want to do, or I have to go and take a minus four. Again, none of these things are optimal. None of these things are wanting to do, but part of FPL is being able to admit when you do make some errors and you do have a lapse in judgment. And I think I did that going into game week five. In midfield again, Salah is there. He is currently going to be my captain because Haaland starts midweek for Manchester City, which means I think he'll be on the bench against Aston Villa. I'll start him anyway because I don't have anyone on my bench I want to play, but I do think Haaland may be bench for Manchester City. Elsewhere in my midfield, Martinelli is there. Rodrigo at the moment and Pascal Gross, hoping Gross can get back to his returning ways because he did blank in game week five. And then up front, we have Jesus along with Martinelli, a difficult fixture away at Manchester United. It's so hit and miss what we're getting with Manchester United at the moment but they do look better in the most past couple of games as well of course they do play on Thursday evening against Leicester as well but here is my team the players that I'm looking to transfer out of course I have a lot of money in the bank now three and a half million that I can spend of course we're looking to transfer out Rodrigo if we get confirmed news he's going to be out for a couple of weeks then I'm looking at upgrading one of my bench players as well Patterson on my bench or Archer are the two I'm really looking at selling because I've got so much money in the bank there's a lot of things I can do to strengthen my squad First up, the first player we're going to talk about, of course, is Rodrigo. Some of you will be looking to sell him just like me. What I would say is please wait for the press conference just to make sure. They did pop his shoulder back in. Again, slightly disturbing image to think about that, but he had a dislocated shoulder. They said it popped it back in. It can take up to two weeks to recover, but there is a chance, for example, that he's back in time for game week seven at home to Nottingham Forest, then Manchester United away, followed by Aston Villa at home. And if he's back for game week seven, then I think I'll probably end up holding him. So I will keep him in my team right up until the deadline. And only if he's going to be ruled out for the next two weeks will I go and end up selling him in my team. In terms of the transfer targets that I'm looking at, there are three players that I'm really keeping my eye on for game week six and my potential transfer in. Diaz of Liverpool again, now I have no Robertson. Having that third Liverpool spot in Diaz is great. Nunes and Jota both looking like they're back soon though and Firmino being on good form does concern me a little bit for his minutes, although Diaz should start both game week six and 
game week seven because I don't think the others are likely to be thrown straight back in given their recent fitness concerns. The next one that we do like it is Allenson Maximan of Newcastle. He's really looked good in the past couple of games. Isaac has come in as well. There is a little bit of concern about whether it's going to be Isaac or Wilson and whether we want to buy either of those. But so Maximan looks nailed. He looks really good. He tends to go through these purple patches of form and go hot and cold. And I feel like he's on one of those purple patches at the moment and it is a good time to be buying him in. Another player who seems on hot, hot form is Wilfred Zaha of Crystal Palace. 7.1 million. Again, he wasn't necessarily nailed to play this week, but did score again this season. Looking really good. That Crystal Palace team are free flowing. Again, I'll wait until before the deadline because there's a small chance that Wilfred Zaha is not at Crystal Palace come the game week six deadline. He is being linked with a few clubs, including Chelsea. So I will wait to see if he is still a Crystal Palace player when I make that transfer. But he is probably the one that I'm really looking at. Although their fixtures are not as good, you get really nice fixtures if you go and buy St. Maximum. Zaha is the one I think is in such good form. Now, in terms of how I could upgrade my bench, the first one we're looking at is Archer of Aston Villa. Again, my 4.5 forward, I could go and do a lot with, with that 3.5 million that I do have in the bank. He's not going to play, so the fixtures don't really matter for Aston Villa, but they are not that great on the horizon. Three strikers, I'm looking at transferring in. The first one is Isaac, the new Newcastle signing. Looks like he should be fine to play against Liverpool. If not, he will be cleared to play at the weekend for them. Again, it's a really nice run of fixtures, as we said, with St. Maximum for Newcastle on the horizon. 7 million. My only slight concern is what happens when Wilson comes back. Are they going to play two up front? Are they going to rotate with each other? I might wait and see exactly what happens before I go buying Isaac. Then the other two that I've spoken about in every video, I finally got a route that I can go and buy either Mitrovic or Ivan Tony. Ivan Tony is actually blanked in the past couple of game weeks, but their fixtures are much, much nicer over the next few, whereas Mitrovic has a couple of difficult fixtures. Manchester United and Chelsea in their next couple as well is difficult for him, but he seems to be scoring against anyone, feels absolutely fixture-proof the form that him and his Fulham teammates are on as well. At the moment, Tony and Isaac are the ones I'm really looking out because again, I am a fixture person. I like buying players that have good fixtures. So I'm put off Mitrovic at the moment, but upgrading Archer feels such a good use of a transfer. And then the final one we could do is upgrading Patterson of Everton. Again, I wish I'd gone Necker Williams. He plays Bournemouth at home this week. If I had him, I could stick him in and not really worry about Rodrigo this week and not have to consider taking a minus four. But it is what it is. I have Patterson in my team now. Reese James, back in training, could come straight back into my team. I have the money in the bank. With Fofana signing for Chelsea as well, it looks like Reese James is nailed to play that right wing back spot with Fofana filling in at right centre back, which means we won't see Reese James at centre back very much more, which is an absolute great thing to hear if you are a Reese James owner. Perisic as well, he does start tonight against West Ham. Is my only concern that he might not start against Fulham. We might see Sessegnon start on that left-hand side as Perisic is rested going into the Champions League, is my prediction. And then Carl Walker, again, that Manchester City defence is solid. I do expect clean sheets for them. Again, with Champions League starting, it is a bit of a concern. If I am going to move defensively, I think there's about a 75% chance it is Reese James that I go with. Just because of the lack of attacking threat you get with Walker, a slight rotation risk that you've got with him there and then you do also have Perisic with a bit of a rotation risk against Fulham and then they play Manchester City in game week seven as well so Patterson to Reese James is my option in the defense upgrade but it does take up a lot of my budget so I am really eyeing up that forward transfer. So this is my team going into the upcoming game week. If Rodrigo goes out only for game week six, I will leave him on my bench and play either Pereira or Saliba. At the moment, it is Pereira starting, just how important I think he is to that Fulham team and how good they look going forward. I do think I'll use my transfer on upgrading Archer to probably Ivan Tony and maybe Isaac if he looks good against Liverpool in that game week five fixture. So this is what I'm on. Salah captain, Haaland maybe vice captain, but it might have to move if I don't think he's going to start in that fixture before the Champions League because we know Pep has said he's not going to run him into the ground. He's not going to start him every single week. So let me know what you think of my transfer plans. Which forwards would you go with? Have you still got Reese James? Are you selling Rodrigo? Who are you selling Rodrigo for? I'm so torn between those options. So I would love to hear it in the comment section down below who you are going to go and buy. Again, thank you so much for 30,000 subscribers. Massively appreciate it. Thank you for your support. If you haven't already, make sure you like the video. Make sure you subscribe to the channel if you are new. Turn on those notifications because I answer the questions of the first hour of every video that I post. Join the lead code. Thank you all so much for watching. Good luck in game week six. If I don't see you before then, and I'll be back again very soon.